Welcome to the new improved Paul C. Buff app. While controlling your flash units with a hub remote, you can use this app to adjust your lights from the convenience of your phone. Please watch our video about the hub remote if you haven't yet. Download the app by searching for Buff Flash Control in your app store. Upon downloading and opening the app, you'll be prompted to allow the use of Bluetooth. Tap OK. After that, a pop-up will help you set up the hub with the app. Make sure the hub is on and Bluetooth is enabled on the hub. Tap on Search for Hubs. It will automatically search for any nearby hubs. A list will appear with the hubs available with serial numbers. You can find your serial number on the hub box or in the About section in the remote menu. Tap on the box to check it and tap Pair Hubs. After they connect, you'll be prompted to select a frequency. You can change the number on the app using the minus and plus buttons. The frequency number must be the same on your hub and all the lights you want to connect. Ensure that all flash units are on different channels if you're connecting multiple lights. Tap Find Flash Units to scan for lights on the frequency you've selected. Once connected, you'll have the option to name your setup. We'll tap on Skip for now, but we'll come back to this later. You might get a pop-up letting you know that you have a new firmware update available for your hub. Tap OK for now, and we'll go over how to update it in just a moment. You'll see a card for each light you've connected. For the purposes of this demo, we've got just one Celestial. First, let's take a look at the menu. Tap on the hamburger icon to open the menu pages. Flash Units will act as your main screen and control board. Setups is where you can change which setup is active on the Flash Unit page, as well as create, edit, and delete setups. The Hub page will show you your hub serial number, firmware version, frequency setting, and number of flash units connected. If there is a new firmware update available, be sure to download it here. This is also where you can unpair your hub or connect a new one. Check out the resources page for additional educational content, along with the what's new and shop pages to look at our products. Now, navigate back to the flash units page. To test the flash, tap the lightning bolt icon in the top right. Congratulations, we're connected. Let's take a look at what the buttons in the card do. The button in the top right will turn your flash on and off. You can tap or long press on the plus and minus buttons to change the power of your flash. Toggling the eye icon by modeling light turns off the modeling light. Slide or tap the bar to change the power of the lamp. Under the Modeling Light slider, you'll see the channel the light is set to, as well as the mode. Tap on Settings. In Settings, you'll find the flash unit details. You can rename your unit for ease of studio organization by tapping on Rename under the flash unit ID. We're going to name ours Main Light. You can see what type of unit you have here as well. Under Flash Unit Settings, you can change settings that you can also adjust on the unit. Let's cycle through the model modes to show you how they change on the main screen, starting with off. Back on the main screen, you can see the eye is struck through. You can tap it to toggle it back on. Independent mode allows you to adjust the modeling lamp and flash manually. Track will set the modeling lamp to the power of the flash. Adjust the flash and the lamp will stay at the same power. However, adjusting the lamp power will create an offset. If you set the lamp to be a different power than the flash and adjust the flash, the modeling lamp will change however much the power of the flash does. This is useful, for instance, if you need your modeling light to always be two stops higher than your flash. Full power will set the lamp to the brightest it can be. Note that on the main screen, you'll be able to toggle the lamp on and off, but you won't be able to adjust the power with the slider unless changed to a different mode. Next, we have recycle indicators to let you know when the light is ready. Again, these settings can also be set on your light. You can choose from None, Audio, Model, or both. Next is the toggle for the Slave Cell for this specific light. Slave Cell will make the unit flash when it detects other lights flash. Finally, we have the option between Color and Action modes. Choose Action if you're needing to compress the duration of flash to freeze action. 
Otherwise, choose color to maintain optimal color consistency from flash to flash. In the next panel, you can see the channel, battery status, paired hub, and firmware. If your firmware needs updating, it'll show up here. If you're experiencing any technical difficulty, updating the firmware will be the first action to take while troubleshooting. Under visibility, you can tap hide until discovered to remove a light from the main screen. You can bring it back to the main screen two ways. Option one is to tap scan all channels and it will show up at the top turned off. Option two is to tap show hidden flashes to reveal that light as hidden. Tap on the toggle and you'll be asked if you want to restore the light. Tap yes, restore. In the event you lose connection with a unit, you'll see the name of the light turn red along with a hazard icon. The pop-up will ask you to check for the common issues and you'll be prompted to either scan for the flash unit or hide it. Alternatively, you can keep sending power and flash commands to the light. If the light successfully receives those commands, it will react accordingly and become active in your app again. If you lose connection between the light that was once active, you can rescan active channels. If you're trying to connect a new light, you'll scan all channels. Now, let's add another light into the mix, making sure my light is on, on the same frequency, and on a different channel from any other light. I'm going to tap Scan All Channels. Now you can see that a Link 800 has joined into the card stack. At the top, you can see it says Frequency 5, Channels 1, 2. Under the Link 800 settings, I'm going to change the name to Hair Light. Now, let's create a setup. Creating a setup isn't necessary, but there are ease of use benefits. Once you have a setup established, when you open the app with the setup pre-selected, it only scans those setup channels. So, if you have a three light setup with lights on channels one, two, and three, the app will only look for lights on those channels. This makes the initial search process much faster and provides a smoother opening of the app. There are two main ways to start a setup. Navigate back to the setups page. You'll see that no setup active is checked. You can tap either create your first setup or the create new setup button. You'll be prompted with the same pop-up as when we first entered the app. The second way, while on the flash units page, tap the folder icon in the top right corner. Again, you can name your setup. We'll name ours Studio Setup. Go back to the Setups page in the menu. You can see that Studio is now checked and active. Tapping Edit allows you to change the name or delete a setup. By default, all of the lights in the frequency will be added into the setup. If you want to remove a light, you can simply toggle the light off to stop it from flashing. You can also select Remove from Setup or Hide until discovered in the settings. This way you can have multiple setups using different lights. Once you have a setup established, you can decide what to do with any extra light you connect. Select Scan all channels to find a new light. You'll have the choice of Save a new setup, Update current setup, or Cancel. You can save a new light in a separate setup, creating as many setups with the lights that you need. And that's it! With that, you're ready to start using the app. If you have any questions, please reach out to our customer service team, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. through 4.30 Central Time. Or you can email us at info at Thank you for watching.